So you want to take part in the Random Man Challenge and thinking of using Katana? Well, Foundry has got you covered. We're offering Random Man Challenge participants a free 90-day license for you to use for your submission. And if you're not sure where to start, then keep watching because I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with Katana, Random Man, and the challenge assets. First things first, installing Katana. Once you've signed up for the 90-day trial, you'll be issued an activation key, which you can use on the Foundry website to activate your license. You'll need a Foundry account to do that. Once activated, you'll get an email with your license key, as well as a link to the installation instructions and where to download the software. So you can download, unzip, install, and run Katana. Next, we need a render man. If you have a commercial Random Man license, you can log into your Random Man Forums account, head to the Downloads page and download Random Man and Random Man for Katana and install both. If you already have Random Man installed for other applications, then you're just going to need the Random Man for Katana download. You can also use the Random Man installer for this. If you're using Random Man non-commercial, you'll still need a Random Man Forums account and will also need to register for a non-commercial license if you haven't done so already. Then you'll be able to download and run the installer for Random Man non-commercial, log into your account and select Random Man for Katana and the Pro Server to install. If you're not seeing the installers that you need, then click Show All and you should now be able to see the full list, make your selections and continue with the installation. To load Random Man into Katana, we need to use a launcher script. A launcher script is a .bat file on Windows and a .sh file on Linux, and is basically used to make sure everything is set up properly before Katana starts, like loading all your plugins, pointing to the right color config, and generally customizing Katana. Using a launcher script means you can have different launch files for each of your different custom setups. You can download an example we've put together from Foundry's Render Man Challenge page, then right-click and edit to take a look inside. There's just a couple of changes you'll need to make to ensure things are all set up correctly. You'll want to replace this path with your Katana installation directory, so wherever Katana has been installed on your computer. This next section loads Renderman, so you'll want to make sure to set these paths to your correct directories for both Renderman Pro Server and Renderman for Katana that we've just installed. Then we're loading Renderman's associated shaders and delegates. This part can all remain the same as we're referring to the paths that we just set. We're also setting Renderman as our default renderer here. This will make it easier when we go to create lights and materials, making sure that Renderman is always our default. And finally, the script will launch Katana. So once all these paths are set up to your correct installation folders, you can save and run this launcher script to start Katana with Renderman loaded. You can ensure this is all working correctly by checking the PRMAN nodes are available in the node creation menu by hitting tab and searching for PRMAN. Now that we have all the software set up, we can start using Katana to create some cool renders. Go ahead and grab the example Katana project that we've provided on Foundry's Renderman challenge page. This download will give you a Katana template to start from and an example composition using some of the challenge assets. But of course, you'll also want to download the full Renderman challenge assets from their web page. Let's open up the Katana project and I'll take you through all the basics of working inside Katana. This is the default layout, but you can drag tabs to move them around to suit you. And you can use the spacebar to maximize and minimize panels as and when you need to. The node graph is where you'll build your scene by creating and connecting up nodes, similar to other node-based applications. Nodes have two flags on them, the view flag and the edit flag. The view flag determines where you're viewing from and the edit flag opens the parameters for that node. You can click on each of these or double click to set both or toggle them with V and E on the keyboard. With the edit flag set, you can make tweaks in the parameters tab. The scene explorer lets you view your scene's hierarchy, but is also where you can control what's loaded into the viewer by expanding and collapsing locations. This is really great for managing those larger scenes. 
You can also view renders in the viewer using the monitor layer or using the catalog or monitor tabs. This example project has been set up so you can simply open it up, right click the render node at the bottom and hit preview render. And you should be able to see the rendered scene. You can also set off a live render to see any changes reflected as you keep working on your scene. If you do this, be sure to enable your scene in the Live Render Updates column of the Scene Explorer. This ensures that any changes to any enabled locations will trigger the Live Render to update. You can be selective as to what you choose, or you can shift-click the root location to enable everything nice and quickly. So let's walk through the setup and how you can use this as a basis for your own project. At the top of the node graph, we've brought in our laid out scene, which has been exported from another application as USD. Here, you can switch over this asset and bring in your own layout whenever it's ready. We've then created and merged in a camera, which you can view through and position to frame your scene. Don't forget to lock your camera position when you're happy to avoid making any accidental changes. Next, we've merged in our materials. This Network Material Create node lets you create multiple materials and edit their shading node networks by jumping inside. This is where you can build up and refine your materials to really bring your assets to life. For example, we can tweak the surface shader parameters or build up the network with more nodes by hitting Tab and searching for a node to drop down. All the RenderMan nodes that you'll need are here, including Pixar Texture for loading in your texture files, fractals for creating patterns, or curvature nodes for creating masks to layer up your materials. These materials can then be assigned to the assets using material assign nodes, where the locations for the asset and the material can be input by middle mouse clicking and dragging from the scene explorer to each field to create the assignment. Now onto one of the most important parts of your project, the lighting. This is how we can convey mood and emotion and really tell the story. Lights are created inside Gaffer 3 nodes. You can right click to add new RenderMan lights, edit light parameters, access light linking and constraint options, mute and solo lights, and generally refine your lighting all from this interface. You can use the transform handles in the viewer or look through lights to refine their position in the scene. But you're definitely going to want to play around with Katana's interactive lighting tools. Once enabled, you can create and edit lights all from the viewer, accessing the parameters and refining their position, all while seeing the changes updating in your render. You can choose a light type and then shift click to place it in your scene. You can click and drag the pointer to position it, hold shift and control to scale the light and control to move it closer and further from the object. We can access the intensity, exposure, and color parameters from the floating widget, as well as muting and soloing, so we don't need to jump back into the parameters panel to make adjustments. There's a lot of other light placement modes to play around with as well to help you achieve the creative vision for your project really easily. At the bottom of the node graph, we have our render settings. The first node is for general render settings, such as the render camera and resolution, and then we have the RenderMan specific settings for things like sampling. You can play around with these to suit you, but something I would definitely recommend enabling is interactive denoising. If you're not familiar with this, it's RenderMan's denoiser that runs with live renders, so you get a better idea of how your scene is looking much faster, just like magic. And that covers the setup of this project and how you can use Katana for the RenderMan challenge. Be sure to check out our page dedicated to this year's challenge for links to more tutorials and example projects for common workflows like AOV setups and in-depth look dev and lighting techniques. You can also check out the example projects that ship with Renderman and feel free to reach out to us on Discord if you have any questions. Good luck with the challenge and we can't wait to see what you create. <laughs>